we're going to take a look at the front wheel bearings on your bay window camper. Now there is a traditional method for checking your wheel bearings on just about any vehicle and that's where the vehicle's safely jacked up and you can take hold of the wheel at 6 and 12 o'clock and 9 and 3 o'clock and just give a little rock. But if the vehicle's new to you, you really need to know those conditions of the bearings themselves and uh, any adjustment can be done subsequently. The whole process is very straightforward and uh, uses the minimal number of tools. A small screwdriver to remove the clip for the speedo cable and uh, you'll need some kind of a prying device, a big screwdriver or a pry bar for taking off of the dust cap. Finally, a 6mm Allen key for the clamp that holds the wheel bearings in position and then a nice adjustable spanner just for adjusting the nut itself. Okay, we're just about ready to inspect our wheel bearings then. It's important to point out at this moment that we've stripped the hub right down so that you can see exactly where the wheel bearings are. And if you'd like to uh, see how to remove your caliper and your disc brake, then refer to the other Just Campers how-to videos dealing with those sections. You don't have to do it that way, um, but it might be nice so that you can clean it all off. You may want to paint the backing plates. You may even be replacing backing plates as well. It's a good idea whilst we're at this stage to give the backing plate a good cleaning down, give it a good inspection. If you need to, you can fit the brand new ones that we've already seen from Just Campers. And of course, your wheel bearings, the outers and the inners are just in here. It's a simple case of removing the speedo retaining clip and taking the dust cover off. Okay, so we're going to use a small screwdriver just to remove the tiny little E-clip that retains the speedo cable in place in the dust cap. Okay, so we have to be really careful with this. It's a tiny little thing. And then we need to put it somewhere safe. Okay, we need to push the end of the speedo cable into the dust cap. And we can probably do that with pulling the back of it behind the whole hub assembly. So with any luck, yeah, there we go. We can just push it in and you're left with the little square hole there. And we're now ready to remove the dust cap. And we can do that with a pry bar or a large screwdriver. You need to put it on the edge there, tap it a little, and just keep going around a little bit at a time. If you try and do too much in one go, it will just lock up on the other side. A final prize, and off that comes. We'll put that down somewhere safe. Now, conveniently, the bolt that holds the retaining clamp in position is facing us, but it could be at any position depending on how they've been adjusted in the past. But it's a 6mm Allen key in there. And undo it. And to remove the nut itself, we need the adjustable spanners. Now we're happening to be working on the left hand side of the vehicle, the near side. But it is important to remember that it's the other way on the other side of the vehicle. So just check before you start undoing. And usually these can just come straight out. It's quite a fine thread on here. So don't get confused by the time you get to the end. You don't want to be dropping this down in all the dirt. We're going to give it a clean off anyway, but because of the grease, any bits of grit will stick on there and be a nightmare. And then we're left with the spacer here. And then finally the wheel bearings themselves. So again, get a pry bar, screwdriver, whatever you want to use, and just loosen it off and bring it out. And also, you'll see that there is a little locating lug under the grease there that fits into the slot down the side here. And that will always be in the same place. Okay, just in case of giving it a little wiggle again, it's that famous little wiggle. We can take them out and before we do anything else, have a quick look down the wheel bearings themselves on these roller bearings and these are in lovely condition and we can just flush the grease through, put some fresh grease in and put them back. You need to look out for scoring on there and particularly if you've got any wear on the bits in between the rollers, then it is time to replace those wheel bearings. Okay, with the outer wheel bearings safely stashed, we can now just prise off the hub and there is a seal on the back that might drag a little. We can take that out and just visually inspect to make sure the last person to do this job put the seal in correctly as they have and just make sure there's no foreign objects in there. Now personally, I like to put more grease on the inside there than this one has, but it's not really a problem. So a quick wire brush off of everything. Pack it with fresh grease and reassemble everything.
Okay, we're checking the bearing race surface here just to make sure there's no deep scoring or any bluing going on in there. So the final part of this assembly we need to check is the spindle itself and this is a case of wiping the grease away and we're going to check where the inner bearing sits and the outer bearing. And what we're looking for is signs of wear here. Now interestingly on this particular vehicle we can see a slight bluing of the spindle here and it's important that you run your finger over that surface to make sure it's nice and smooth and uh, that's not a particular problem there so we'll be okay to repack those uh, very good condition bearings that we found and adjust everything up. Okay having removed our caliper and our disc and the wheel bearings and hubs uh, we're ready to replace our disc cover. Now this could be bent and uh, a problem there or it might just rust it out. The most important thing to remember is your dust cap and your wheel bearings covered up, taken well away from the area. I've covered up the caliper we have down here and one final thing is still a little bit of a smear of grease on here on the spindle, just protect that, it's just to save any rubbish falling down into it. The most important thing to remember here is personal safety. We're going to be using a wire brush, so it's eyeglasses and also uh, some brake cleaning fluid. We don't want that splashing back up into us. And finally, brake dust. We're going to be wearing a paper mask as well. Well, you can buy this brake cleaner from Just Campers, but as ever, it's very important to read all the instructions down here as regards the environment's health and safety and, of course, uh, the flammability of the product. Now we want to get rid of the worst of the loose dust and rust on here with the brake cleaner. You can see it dripping down onto the paper to keep things nice and clean and tidy. And you will see the brake cleaner evaporating off as you go. Okay, we need an 11mm spanner or a socket if you prefer for these. A quick tap, they're not exactly super torqued up. And there are only three of these bolts. Well, having loosened the nuts, it is a case of it being easier with the socket. Just a case of taking it off. Now this one's in really good condition, so if you wanted to, you could just clean that right back down and prime it and paint it up and it should last a good time. If not, it's on with your brand new genuine one. <laughs>